Now available in paperback, John Haynes at Death's Door, the man who rules the world, takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed John Haynes series adventure. Pick up your copy of John Haynes at Death's Door at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. One of my viewers wanted to know what happened to breakdancing. And what happened to breakdancing is that just like rap music, it was co-opted by Madison Avenue and Hollywood and repackaged to become something mainstream. Now, your breakdancing is the name that your Madison Avenue and Hollywood rechristened b-boying. And what a b-boying was, was when a group of dancers would go out here and participate in an energetic dance that where they follow the beats of the drums as a DJ was going out here and cutting a record as related to his set. And your b-boys would go out here and follow the beats of a DJ like Cool Herc when he was out here going out here cutting records and as he was cutting records, they would follow the breaks in the beats of the drums on the track. And when they participated in this dance, it was b-boying was about dancing in a way that was getting excited, acting energetically, and causing a disturbance. And that's what the dancers were emulating with their very dynamic and energetic moves, like your backspins, your knee spins and your head spins and your b-boys they originated their dance form by getting inspired by entertainers like the late james brown and they also were inspired by gymnastics and your karate movies like those that the late bruce lee starred in and they were also inspired by the 70s dance craze known as poppin and lockin and according to some your um b-boying was a got its roots from your poppin and lockin which was a very dynamic form of dance created by foundational black americans in the early to mid 70s now your b-boys again they were out here participating in these dances usually at house parties or they would go out here and participate in them at your clubs when they were out here having their rap nights and they also would go out here and participate in these dances on the streets of New York and I've seen many b-boys back when I was a kid going out here participating in these dance moves what they would do is go out here take out a big piece of cardboard from a box like an oven or a refrigerator and they would drop that box on the ground of a place like a central park and then they would go out here and participate in their dance moves to the beats of the of the music that was playing in the background now usually your b-boys would be definitely heavily associated with your rap music back in the day because your b-boys were basically the dancers who got the crowd hyped up before the entertainers started going out here and doing their rhymes because usually what they would do is have the instrumental going on and then the b-boys would go out here and start dancing and as they started dancing the whole crowd got hyped up and that's what got people excited to go out here and look to buy the tapes after the show because usually your rap music was not sold in record stores no usually you had to go out here and buy the records um, and the tapes after the show and those were sold out the trunk of their cars so usually this was a way to get people motivated to go out here and want to buy the tapes and the records after the show so it's all it was all part of the business of your rap and again break dan break dancing or b-boying was a part of it but what your mainstream media wanted to do was go out here and break the b-boy music away from its from its foundational black roots and that's why your madison avenue and hollywood went out here and renamed b-boying into breakdancing because your 
Madison Avenue and Hollywood wanted to go out here and repackage the um, narrative as related to B-Boys, and they didn't want you to see what a where a B-Boy came from, which was from the South Bronx, and the Blacks and Puerto Ricans who went out here and originated this art form. So what they did was go out here and look to call it breakdancing to break it away from its foundational black culture and erase its whole roots from foundational black Americans. And this was done throughout the mid 80s as they were looking to make b-boying mainstream and they looked to go out here and put a whole a diverse face on your b-boying. So we started to see the mainstreaming of b-boying into breakdancing starting i believe with the 1982 or 83 motown 25th anniversary where the late michael jackson went out here and participated in one of the most legendary b-boy moves which is the moonwalk now the moonwalk that michael jackson participated in in the 25th anniversary motown show that whole dance routine has its roots from b-boying, but by that time, they were looking to turn it into what they called breakdancing. And another um, mainstream media film where we saw b-boying look to go mainstream was the 1983 film Flashdance. Now, in the 1983 film Flashdance, the main character known as Alex participates in a break dance as she's auditioning to be a part of a popular dance school in the final scene of the movie. And she gets her inspiration from watching b-boys go out here and participate in their dance as she's walking along the way with her white boyfriend. And that's another secret people don't know that Jennifer Beals is a black woman. But they got this biracial black woman to play Alex, and what they were doing, again, was looking to try to go out here and erase black people from the, the art form of b-boying. Now, as the years went on, we started to see breakdancing go more mainstream, and I even remember as a kid seeing Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe participating in a breakdance in the old Claster animated series from the 80s. And as the 80s went on, your breakdancing went more and more mainstream. And over the last 30 years, your b-boying went and became breakdancing. And as it became breakdancing, we started to see people all over the world become breakdancers. And we started to see a lot of people going out here and capitalizing on the black culture of b-boying, turning it into breakdancing. And as they turned it into breakdancing, they started having competitions in countries like Japan and Korea and Germany for seeing who had the best crew as related to breakdancing. And in 2014, your breakdancing is now considered to be an Olympic event that will be a part of the 2024 Olympics. And sadly, as your breakdancing has gone out here and gone global, your foundational black Americans and Puerto Ricans who went out here and created this art form don't get the credit as related to creating this art form. Neither does the legendary Cool Herc really get the respect that he deserves for going out here and, cre and creating and inventing the beats that led to this art form. No, in a lot of cases, most people just see breakdancing as just another dance form, and they go out here and it's a billion dollar industry, but your foundational black Americans, they don't even get a single dime of this, and neither does the Puerto Ricans who worked hard on this dance form. I mean, just like the rap music form, sadly, the when it went mainstream, the people who created it don't get the credit that they deserve for creating this masterful art form in the late 70s and the 80s. And as it became popular, in many movies like your movies like Rappin' 
and break in which it was an actual movie in the 80s people just looked at the dance form but they didn't really see the core roots of it and why the brothers and the puerto ricans were out here doing it as somebody who actually lived in the south bronx a lot of people again they were doing these dances as a way to express themselves and they wanted to go out here and show that brothers and sisters could go out here and do something positive in the blight of the ghetto because in that blight of that ghetto of the south bronx with all of those abandoned burnt out buildings those abandoned lots that were filled with ruins a lot of brothers were and sisters were out here looking to find their own hope and they looked to do something positive and as your break dancing went mainstream people forgot about all the reasons why all the b-boys were out here participating in these dances and sadly again the art form was has been co-opted the art form has been compromised and now the art form is something that people just do and they don't really understand the roots of it they don't understand why there are things like the um dance battles which was featured in movies like beat street i remember in beat street they had the dance battle Again, people don't know where all of this stuff comes from because they never lived around it. But as somebody who lived around it, I know where all of this stuff comes from. And again, it was all about doing things in a positive fashion. And maybe that's one of the more ironic things. You know, a lot of people, the, the art form is still out here, but people really need to understand that the roots of your breakdancing was b-boying, and b-boying was a part of the performance in a raps and a rap show and again it was all about again positivity and that's what your b-boying was all about showing that you know we got these skills as related to dancing we can express ourselves in a positive fashion and we can go out here and be positive and again the, everything about it was positive and again came from the brothers out here struggling out here and again the whole thing is that people they all call it break dancing but it is not break dancing it's called b-boying and we need to acknowledge the roots from those blacks and puerto ricans who created this masterful art form now this was a video requested by one of my viewers and if you want to request a video you can send a donation to the cash app and if i know something about that subject i will make that video for you and if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and novels like the Thetas, and my vampire novel Eternal Night, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find all of those books at other online sellers, like Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis Legacy. Sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Legacy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e steam horror of a hyena woman. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoven in this action-packed all-new e steam series adventure. Get Easty Horror of a Hyena Woman in paperback and e-readers today.